The Eagles have finally made a move by bringing in Seattle Seahawks running back Rashard Penny on a one-year deal. How does this impact B. John Robinson at 10, Miles Sanders, even an Austin Eckler trade? Also, Kazir White, he's gone, and Darren Waller joins the NFC East. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show again on a Tuesday as more things are happening in the world of Philadelphia and the next the National Football League. Free agency period is wild right now. Let's start with the breaking news, and that is Rashard Penny to the Eagles. Their first external free agent has agreed to a one-year deal. Bleeding Green Nation has the write-up. Quote, after a bit of a slow start to NFL free agency, the Eagles are finally on the board with an external addition. The Birds have agreed free agent running back, or term with the free agent running back Rashard Penny, according to insider Ian Rappaport. The exact contract details were not immediately leaked, which we recommend, which could suggest it's a team-friendly deal. Now, obviously, they talked about Rashard Penny previously, and for those of you who don't understand who this guy is, here's a good write-up again from Bleeding Green Nation. Quote, as a 2018 first-round pick, excuse me, Penny has largely been a bust for the Seattle Seahawks, but damn was he good to finish the 2021 season. He posted the following numbers over the final five games last year. 92 attempts, 671 yards, 7.2 yards per carry, six touchdowns. Wild. The Eagles will not be looking to spend significant resources on the running back position, which could easily rule them out of targeting Penny, but he would be an intriguing addition given the price. At 5'11", 220, he would bring more size to the Eagles' backfield, end quote. Now, the reason why Rashard Penny is, A, going to be so cheap when we finally see the contract details is that he's coming off of a big-time injury, right? He broke his fibula, or fibula, excuse me, five games into the season this past year. And so on paper, looking at his numbers from Pro Football Reference, you'd say, oh, Thomas, there's nothing special about this guy. He's never had more than 120 carries an entire season. His best year, again, was 2021, and he only had 749 yards that year. And I understand that. But we're not going based off of what he's done. It's what you will do for me in the future. And this guy is the perfect build for Philadelphia to be that third down back, that option to come you know, out of the backfield opposite of a guy like Kenny Gainwell or Boston Scott, to be that big physical guy at the goal line inside the Eagles rushing attack. Make no doubt, if he stays healthy, Rashard Penny is going to be a serious running back in the National Football League next year. Just by default that he's a perfect size, he has the ability, and the offensive line plus the scheme of the Jalen Hurts zone read is a perfect friendly bet for Philadelphia and for running backs. And so this is a very low risk, very high reward option that I have nothing against. However, let me just make it clear. Some people are saying, oh, you know, he's going to be a role player back. This means there's still have a chance at trading for Austin Eckler or re-signing Miles Sanders or drafting Bijan Robinson. No, no, no. This is how a Roseman showing you how unimportant running back is to him. And while we all wanted Eckler and we all want Bijan Robinson and we, I want to re-sign Miles Sanders, he's telling you right here, I can win with Kenny Gainwell on a fifth year or a fifth round pick rookie contract or Shard Penny on a one year deal and maybe some seventh round running back or free agent running back that they pick up this offseason. They are not getting Bijan Robinson based on this signing. I would be absolutely shocked. Put me on freezing cold takes the night of the draft if they actually were to go ahead and get Bijan Robinson or even Jameer Gibbs. Any of the top three running backs in this draft class, I think Philadelphia is instantly out of. Now, the US, UCLA running back in round four. There's a bunch of different backs for round five, six, seven. They trade back up there. It's very possible. But a first round running back, a premier running back in the draft, kiss that goodbye with their shard penny signing. This is a good signing. I want to be at, this is a good signing. But it just shows you where Howie Rosen's priorities are at, and they were very clearly not at running back. Okay, also showing uh, the priorities of Howie Roseman, the other news that just popped, Kazir White, he will not be returning to the Philadelphia Eagles as he is signed, according to Bleeding Green Nation, a two-year contract with the Arizona Cardinals. Quote, Kazir White is leaving the Philadelphia Eagles to sign a two-year contract worth up to $11 million with the Arizona Cardinals, according to a report from NFL insider Jordan Schultz. Uh, White is teaming up with his former Eagle defensive coordinator, new Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon, and former Eagle linebackers coach, new Cardinals defense defensive coordinator Nick Rallis in the desert, end quote. Philadelphia has now lost T.J. Edwards, and they've lost Kazir White. Their two starting linebackers for the 2022 NFL season are gone. Again, showing you the fact that Howie Roseman doesn't care about middle linebackers or even outside off-ball linebackers. He cares about offensive line, defensive line, quarterback, and wide receiver. I mean, recently, that's kind of been his thing. More specifically, defensive line and offensive line. This is concerning. Just based on the fact that is Sean Bradley, Davion Taylor going to be your other starting linebacker? We know that Kobe Dean's going to be in there, and the hope is he's going to be what he was drafted to be in the third round, and that is the heir apparent and future at linebacker. But I was kind of thinking after losing TJ Edwards, they might keep Kazir White. But again, 
That's done. They didn't want to pay him $11 million over two years. That's $5.5 million per year. Right now, Philadelphia has $6.5 million in cap space, and so you do the math. They didn't want to spend it all on a linebacker. Still surprised we haven't had any internal restructuring, any Jalen Hurts contract extension or Lane Johnson restructuring or Darius Slate trade. Still very uh, surprised, excuse me, but I think this does leave the door open for C.J. Gardner-Johnson or James Bradbury, which, of course, if they happen, we will have it here on the Toss Mod Show, so be sure to go ahead and subscribe. What are your thoughts on these two initial moves? Do you like like Rashard Penny? Do you wish they were keeping Kazir White? I'm very curious to gauge the kind of litmus test of Eagle fans going into day two, really night two, of the 2023 NFL free agency period. Again, we didn't expect big groundbreaking moves, but it is interesting how quiet they have been. I like the Penny move, but we'll see if they can get the big fish, and that is Gardner Johnson, hopefully in the coming days, maybe the coming hours. Who knows? All right, final story here. Bleeding Green Nation has this one. Darren Waller to the Giants. Don't you hate whenever good football players go to division rivals? It's one of my least favorite things in the entire world. And I think Darren Waller is great. His whole comeback story is fantastic. But go anywhere else besides the Giants. What a move by New York here. Even with all the logos you see behind me, you got to give credit where credit is due. This is a pretty good move. Quote, New York Giants acquired former Pro Bowl tight end Darren Waller from the Las Vegas Raiders in exchange for a late third round pick, 100 overall. According to a report from NFL insider Tom Pelissero, many have noted the pick they gave up is the one they received from trading Kadarius Tony to the Kansas City Chiefs. Waller has the potential to be the most threatening tight end the Giants have had since Jeremy Shockey. Am I forgetting someone? It's been some time. Waller posted monster back-to-back seasons in 19 and 20, accounting for 197 receptions, 2,300 yards, and 12 touchdowns. Since then, however, injury issues have limited him to uh, to playing in just 20 of his last 34 possible games, and he's had, as they say here, you know, 1,000 yards, five touchdowns during the stretch. So he's not as dominant as he once was, but the Giants are going to pay $11 million to him this year, and if you have the money to do so, you just gave Danny Dimes a ton of money. Why not give him some more weapons? And they need wide receivers, which they might take in the draft, but this is a good step forward for what's going to be probably the second best team in the NFC East next season. Really, the big main threat to Philadelphia is not Dallas or Washington, although they're still going to be good. I mean, the NFC East is stacked. It's the Giants, and it's because of coaching. Competent coaching goes a long way, and then when you add talent around a young quarterback as Philadelphia showed everybody else what you do, they can be very, very successful. So congrats, Danny Dimes. Seriously, I mean, we're Eagle fans here, but this is a big move for Danny Dimes, and it's pennies on the dollar. The Raiders are in full Raider mode right now. I, I mean, Garoppolo going there... It's, it's fine. I think Garoppolo's a pretty good quarterback, but it's just not competitive in the AFC West, and so you kind of wonder what the Raiders are doing. But we don't care because we're NFC people here on the Thomas Mott Show. More, I mean, we care about the entire NFL, but we're NFC people on the Thomas Mott Show, and so obviously we have bigger frisk to fry. Okay, obviously, when more news breaks, we're going to cover it here on the Thomas Mott Show. Wednesday link, live Wednesday night. Myself and Josh Davis, the Philly special show, probably breaking down even more crazy Eagle stuff that's happening tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to the vacation bell and join us 7 p.m. Eastern time. We do it every single week. We take your questions. It's going to be a bunch of fun. All right. Hopefully more stuff happens. If we do, we'll cover it. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been the Thomas Mott Show.